This is a seasonal event, probably the only place in the world where this happens with these kinds of numbers of turtles um, on an annual basis. The turtles just don't leave before the waters get too cold and the cape is a natural trap. The bent arm of the cape, plus you have two sort of natural harbors that divert turtles also. There's Wellfleet Harbor and there's Provincetown Harbor, so they're two hooks within a hook. It's just a matter of time before the water gets too cold. They stop eating, they can't move, they eventually become cold stunned. Uh, the key temperature is 50 degrees. When the bay um, hits 50 degrees, sometimes it's a little warmer, sometimes it's a little cooler, um, that's when they get uh, stunned by the cold and they just can no longer move at all. And then they start washing ashore. Sea turtle hotline. Yes, you got a turtle. Whereabouts are you? Okay, you are Kingsbury Beach. Perfect. If you would be able to walk that back to the parking lot and cover it completely with dry wrapper seaweed and then draw a new line. Okay, so we had a turtle called in from someone um, and they did exactly what they're supposed to do. They identified the turtle, they called it into Mance Audubon to the 24-hour sea turtle hotline. Now we're going to head over and do our best to get it off of the beach as soon as possible and bring it back to the sanctuary where it can be temperature stable. We just picked up a loggerhead from Corn Hill down by the jetty. We loaded it into the van and we're gonna go back to Wealthy Bay Wildlife Sanctuary to process it. And it'll probably be going on the 9 a.m. transport tomorrow to NEAQ. So this is a turtle that just came in from Wing Island. A very large Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. And it's alive. It's moving a little bit. So the first thing we do is we bring him to the processing table. This has all the, the data you'd want to know about the turtle, including measurements, um, the condition of the turtle physically, where it's from, who found it, the time it was found. We scan them for tiny pit tags that someone could have implanted in them at some point for tracking. This one does not have any. A lot of these turtles look dead when we first get them. And when we get them in the lab, we test their reflexes so we can move their flipper. And if we get a little movement, um, like you say, it's kind of rising there. So, yep, there you go. So that's a reflex there. So he's definitely alive. The last three days have been pretty busy. On Sunday, we had 76 turtles come in. Monday was 72, and today we're already up to 60. So that's like 220 turtles in the last three days. Our total for the season is probably over 400 at this point. So it's been really busy the last three days, a lot of late night, early mornings. We have eight staff members this year, which is the most we've ever had which allows us to sort of cycle who's on, who's off. If I'm working the evening shift, walkers are going out at 10 p.m. and they end up finding turtles, and we end up processing turtles until four in the morning. There's two more additional people who can come on the next tide, so like 10 a.m. the next day. When they arrive here at the New England Aquarium Sea Turtle Hospital, you know, we see heart rates of one, two beats per minute. Um, sometimes less than that, and you know we see on ultrasound that there's cardiac activity, and we can use emergency meds to get them back. That's why when they're triaging them down in Wellfleet and looking through the turtles, you know even if a turtle looks like it might be dead, if there's even a slight twinge of possibility there, they'll send the turtle up. These animals are all threatened and endangered, and they pretty much got this way due to human activity. 
as humans, we owe it to them to get them back to populations that are not in a way that we worry that they might not be on this earth anymore. If we can save these turtles and we put them back into the Gulf of Mexico, uh, then they have a chance to nest and that may ultimately save the species. We want to engage the public because for most people, if you talk sea turtles, no one would ever think Cape Cod and sea turtles. It wouldn't even dawn on them that they're here. Mass Audubon has been a key partner in all of this um, for decades. The dedication that they have for these animals, it's amazing. And if it wasn't for them, these turtles would just be out there perishing on beaches. This is a really good conservation story. This is Mass Audubon paying for 30 years of protecting Ridley sea turtles, protecting all sorts of species, horseshoe crabs, piping plovers, least terns, you name it. Whenever we thought there was an issue, a Mass Audubon was there. Being compassionate humans as we all are, and you know, we want to make sure we do the best for these animals, and, and I think that's what kind of drives us. We know every single one of these animals count.